Hey, it's Ocean, and welcome back to my channel. You all know that I love providing you some gameplay tips and how I make my game more fun and all of the above. So that's what we're gonna do today. My favorite career in The Sims 4 is the freelancer career. And today I wanted to show you how I make it even more fun with some very simple creative tips. The freelancer career was introduced to the base game and originally came with the freelance programmer, artist, and writer options. Since then, you have the ability to become a paranormal investigator if you own the paranormal stuff pack, a simply crafted creator if you own eco lifestyle, and a freelance photographer if you own the Moschino stuff pack. Being a freelancer has its benefits because you can set your own schedule and work anywhere at any time, which leads me to my first tip, get to work. Literally, working from home can get boring since you spend 85% of your sims time at home anyway. So I like to download lots that replicate a workspace for my sims so it feels like I'm actually going to work or I have somewhere to answer to. The first lot I want to show you is this Creekside Office Space by Sarah Beam. It's a cafe lot type but serves as an office space with cubicles for your freelancer. I don't know about you, but I just love watching my Sims come here and just work in their own little cubicle. Um, I have had the same kind of work experience and for some reason I'm okay watching that in the game. There are a few empty cubicles where you can go into build mode and edit them to your Sims personality. So when you visit this lot, your Sim has a designated cubicle. Upstairs offers a break room for all of the employees, which features a microwave and some simple items to keep your needs up. Sarah Bean actually has a version 2 of this lot, which is geared for programmers and tech savvy sims. It's the same exact layout with different furnishings. I love this version because you could actually have your sim take on gaming related gigs only and imagine that they're a game developer or in the Sims 4 case, they could be a certified bug fixer or something. It's a really creative way. There's some gaming chairs, lots of just like gadgets and cool things in this version of the same lot. I have three more lots to showcase that help you achieve achieve this type of gameplay for your other freelance careers too. I have three more lots to showcase that help you achieve this type of gameplay for the other freelancer careers as well. I was personally inspired by Sarah Bean's office that I created my own. <laughs> Here in Mount Komarevi, I created the Wi-Fi office, which was designed with freelance writers in mind. Like the previous office, it features a cafe to grab a quick coffee and it operates like a cafe lot type. The first two floors look very modern, but when you go to the top floor, that's where your sim will work on the newest article, blog post, and so forth at their desk. It's not really fancy up here. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny bathroom and there's really not much space, but I think it gives that hardworking Japanese influence atmosphere here. If you have a sim that's a freelance artist, the Naked Gnome by BotSpots is perfect for them. You have to include custom content when searching for this lot though, because for some reason the gallery tags it as having custom content, but there isn't any. This lot is so perfect for the city. It operates as a cafe because coffee and croissants are a must, obviously. And there's big windows that let so much light in. And like the other lots, there's desk for you to choose where your sim works. On some of the desks, there's actually some digital sketch pads and you're just surrounded by beautiful art and paintings. It has a real industrial, youthful vibe in the whole building. The break area is nicely sized. There's a big meeting room, which is perfect for storytelling. Like maybe your sim has a meeting to attend or is hosting a presentation. You can do that here but my favorite part of this build is its name and how it's implemented throughout the build you'll find little naked gnome statues and naked gnome paintings and such everywhere and it's a multi-purposeful lot it features some of the get famous items the last lot is for a freelance career that i actually never use this is the newcrest photo studio by no one other than sarah bean again this is ideal for freelance photographers which came with the moschino stuff pack I typically use this lot if I want my Sims to take family photos or just have portraits for their, you know, at home use. But it's actually great for photographers because you can come here to complete your gigs as opposed to having all of this huge photography equipment on your home lot. There's also a cubicle style area in this lot if you need to chat with your clients, but ultimately you'll be sending your photos by mail with the freelance photography career. With the first tip in mind, the next way that I make the freelancer career fun is by 
actually setting my own schedule. Now the calendar comes with base game, but in this tip, I'm using the holiday feature that came with seasons. You can utilize the calendar as your personal planner to truly make your own schedule. This gives your gameplay structure, so you know you're not just picking up gigs every second. You can schedule an office meeting where you visit the lots I've just shown you, or assign a day where you work on your gig. My sim considers Sundays his day off, but he has the co-writing kids bedtime stories gig due Tuesday. So I scheduled for him to find inspiration for the book on Monday, which will be when I have him practice writing or work on the gig itself. This actually works best if you have a good amount of time before your gig is due. That way it doesn't feel like you're constantly working around the clock. The idea is that you're not overworking your sim in such a laid back career. I stopped reading the gig descriptions and I felt like my sim was working harder and not smarter. So assign days for them to work and eat up your free time. My final and probably my favorite tip isn't even actually using the freelancer career necessarily, but you can basically create your own freelance career by registering your career through the Ministry of Labor through the phone. This is a base game feature that I forget exists all the time, but recently I've had to use it when my sim was a self-employed candle maker. It's cool because you can write your job description and everything will fall in your Sims career tab. In today's example, this Sim is going to be a yoga instructor. No, there isn't a yoga instructor career, but if you own the Spa Day game pack, there was a recent refresh for the pack, which offered a whole new experience. The ability to basically be the masseuse and be the nail tech and be the yoga instructor. So now you can host your own yoga classes if you have at least wellness skill level two. And after buying an instructor's yoga mat, you can go anywhere you can place your instructor's mat and people will come or not people, sims. This is such a fun way to use this feature because your sim gets paid and all of the tips I mentioned earlier apply here as well. Maybe your sim only offers yoga classes two days a week, or maybe you can take them to the gym and imagine they work there and hold yoga classes. Your sims can also hold private classes where you can further your gameplay by having select clients. There's still freedom here, and that's what I love the most about this. I hope these tips help you explore the freelancer career or make it even better if you have already. Just let me know in the comments right now, what is your favorite career in The Sims 4 and how do you get creative with your Sims careers? I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Just keep simming. Always, always, always stay wavy. And I will see you in the next video. Alrighty, peace out.